Welcome back to another episode of Grow. I'm your host, Desarte Yarnway, head of community here at Altruist. And today I'm joined by my friend, Jackson Wood. Jackson, how you doing? I'm doing good, Desarte, man. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I've been trying to get you on a podcast for like two years. <laughs> I tried to get you on my podcast. I had some mishaps in the beginning. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, here you are on Grow with Altruist. I appreciate you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us. Yeah, of course. I've been loving the episodes and uh, happy to be on the podcast. Awesome. Awesome. Now, for those who don't know who Jackson Wood is, why don't you tell them a little bit about your firm and what you do? Yeah. So my name is Jackson Wood. Um, I'm an advisor with Freedom Day Solutions. Um, I'm based in Pocatello, Idaho. So it's a small little town in rural Idaho, right by Yellowstone. Um, but we serve clients all over the, all over the nation. Um, I've been in the industry right out of college, started off at Fidelity Investments and uh, quickly realized I wanted to kind of run it myself launched my own RIA. And after running that for a few years, I joined Ryan Kruger and the company at Freedom Day Solutions. And uh, I've never been happier, never been more excited or you know, more optimistic about my future and the growth of what we're doing as a company. So kind of went in reverse from, you know, most people start at the, at the big firms and then launch on their own. Um, I, I saw a really good opportunity to grow and to better every part of my business by joining Freedom Day. And uh, as of this year, I joined them and we've been off to the races since then. That's awesome. And that's sort of what I want to talk about is that merger with Ryan Kruger and starting Freedom Day. But before we do that, um, I call new advisors entering the space, especially after college or a couple of years out of school, emerging advisors, right? What was that experience like and how did you grow your firm um, at such a young age? Yeah, so that was... That was probably the hardest part of, of the entire transition. I started off at Fidelity and you're not allowed to take any clients from Fidelity. And I, I obviously didn't take any that I had met at Fidelity. I took what I learned there and used that to launch my own practice. And when we launched, um, we launched our RIA or I launched the RIA with two focuses, which was asset management, which is all I knew really at Fidelity is building yeah. portfolios, rebalancing those portfolios. And then we, we, kind of uh, merge that with one of my passions, which was financial planning. And so right from the very beginning, my own RIA, we offered two distinct services, our month to month, month to month financial planning or coaching as we called it and our asset management. And we just marketed that like crazy. We used Instagram, we used Facebook, we used word of mouth. I mean, we grew the practice pretty much exclusively on Instagram um, and, and just, ran with it. We, we focused on what was working for us, which, you know, was being authentic, being real, telling our story, telling the stories of our clients anonymously. Hopefully that can change at some point in the future with the, some of the regulations changing. Um, and that just attracted, you know, client after client. And we found just amazing success. We, you know, we asked clients for referrals and really just kind of grew the practice from literally nothing over the course of a few years to something that we were really proud of. I had a partner with, with that firm and um, it, you know, it was, it was really tough, but having that experience of building portfolios and, and what Fidelity taught me kind of was crucial in launching my own firm. That's awesome. It's interesting that you say exclusively on Instagram, right? Yeah. We have advisors saying, and one thing that I'm super passionate about is amplifying the voice of myself, my firm, but also having advisors amplify their voices, right? Yeah. Because in this saturated marketplace, you are the only unique thing, right? It's going to be your voice, your thought leadership. How did you leverage Instagram to amplify your voice? I'm interested in that. Yeah. So Instagram has a lot of really amazing tools. Um, it's probably my favorite platform for storytelling, for teaching, uh, for reaching out. It's got a lot of really good features. So what we would do is we started, and we're still doing this to this day, we started this mini series on Instagram TV where we would just create evergreen content. You know, it wasn't news. It wasn't talking about market events or anything like that. It was five to 10 minute video clips, videos of just me teaching people, hey, what's a Roth IRA? Hey, should I pay my mortgage off early? Hey, what is the deal with credit cards? What about investment allocation or asset allocation? What do I, you know, we just, every week we would release a video and then we would release stories and we would release posts and we would link and have swipe ups to blog posts on our website. And, you know, I realized that people are 
glued to their phones. And I don't know, it's probably a bad thing they're glued to their phones, but if they've got the device in their hand, they're probably on Facebook or on Instagram or some sort of social media. And so instead of trying to direct them to our website or email them, or we just said, look, we're going to go to where they are. We know they're on these platforms and we're going to tell a unique story. We're going to differentiate ourselves from other marketing by being real and authentic and vulnerable and transparent. And we're going to say, look, if you want this to happen in your life, send us a DM, send me an email, swipe up and get on my calendar. And uh, that worked better than I thought that it would. You know, it helped to have a little bit of a social media following in advance. Um, but it, it really just spoke to people. And, and the principle there was instead of trying to move people to one platform or some other platform or to email, just go to where they are, right? They're all on Instagram. I saw my wife, she was on Instagram. She, you know, and so that worked, right? And that's how we built the firm. That's awesome. One of the cool things that I see on your kind of Twitter description is that you're the co-founder of the Wood family, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Family has like an Instagram or a YouTube channel that you yeah. use, right? So you probably were skilled in the area of social media just beforehand, right? And that kind of transferred into building your business. Now for the advisor that isn't that skilled at this, what steps or what recommendations would you give them so that they can amplify their voice? It's it's all about consistency. Um, you know, you, you've got to obviously learn the SEO and the background and, and Taylor Schulte is a fantastic resource for that. I mean, he just put on the most incredible conference with Kitsis. Um, you learn kind of the back end of how you promote videos on YouTube or Instagram hashtags, learn all that, right? Mm -hmm. but the real consistency is being authentic or the real key is being authentic and consistency, just relentless discipline, for your method of communicating and your advertising plan and marketing plan. Um, that's what worked for us. I mean, uh, it's, it's because I try to make investing real. For example, I went to the grocery store the other day to get some groceries. It was late at night, family's asleep, realized we didn't have enough food. And I was walking through the grocery store and it was a Kroger. And I realized like, you know, Kroger is a company that you know, it's fantastic. They've raised their dividend for over a decade straight. So I snapped a couple pictures on my phone and I put them on Instagram. And I said, look, this is something that you go to every time you get paid. Every family in America goes to the grocery store. Do you realize audience that you can own companies like this or this company in your portfolio and benefit from being a stakeholder? And so it's, it's just consistency and, and pointing out, you know, what, other advisors aren't, you know, like how often you interact with a public company, how it can better your life or what a Roth IRA. I mean, even the simple basics like that worked. And it's just a matter of always doing it and, and thinking about it. And I know that if you're an advisor, you're thinking about these things anyway, they're just pointing it out. Are you driving down the street? You're going to go through McDonald's. You'll see Costco. You'll see, you know, the mall, you'll see, you know, what REIT does the mall belong to? And um, that really helped us kind of bridge this gap between you know, finance and investing and financial planning is always this scary, daunting thing. But in reality, we interact with it in every single part of our lives. And so kind of connecting that makes people excited and it gets them on board. And all of a sudden they're sending you emails and jumping on your, on your calendar to set up a call. And it's just, it's worked great. Awesome. Keep it simple, right? That's it. Yeah. And I think that the advisors that keep it simple do the best. Now for the main topic of our conversation, right? You recently merged your firm. A lot of advisors are thinking about one, going independent, or two, merging their firms. What was that experience like for you? It has been absolutely incredible. Um, Ryan Kruger and his partner, Mike Catalano, I, I've been reading Ryan's blog for years and, and bugging him every time he would post something of what it meant and asking him questions. And he gracious, graciously answered every single one of my questions for years. And I realized that there was this level of expertise that he had with asset management and this structure that they have built with their firm that I wanted to elevate my practice to. And graciously, I got a seat on the roster, a seat on the bench. Um, Freedom Day Solutions was born and you know everything kind of migrated over. It's been absolutely incredible. Um, running your own firm requires a lot of attention to compliance, a lot of attention to billing on accounts, to rebalancing, to ACATs and all of that. And it, and it became this almost distraction for me because you know, I'm, I'm okay at doing that, but that's not my expertise. I'm good at selling and being an advisor and talking to people and having conversations. And so I realized that by joining this firm and getting access to people that are much better at those things than I am, 
it freed my time up to create content, to reach out to clients, to talk with them, to meet with them. And, uh, you know, I can, there's an old saying where you just lift where you stand, right? Focus on your strengths um, and, and let people that are better at the other parts of the business do that. And so that's, that's the main benefit that I've had. And it has been absolutely incredible. I've loved every second of it. Um, you know, and it's definitely true. They were better at a lot of the systems and kind of the back office stuff than I was. And so it's been a big, big relief for me. And, and the team is just awesome. That's awesome. You know, in my, in my first job in financial services, the CEO of that very, very large company used to say that the best CEOs are great quitters. And I walked <laughs> around trying to figure out what that meant. Like, hey, I don't think you would have gotten here if you were a quitter. And one day I was actually going to the bathroom and he stopped me. He was like, what I meant by that? Because I emailed him about yeah. it. What I meant by that is that as you scale your firm, as you reach new heights, what you're supposed to do is delegate the tasks that you aren't so good at to people who specialize in these things. And by quitting these tasks, right, you're ultimately elevating your firm to new levels. So essentially that's what you did by joining Freedom Day. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the logistics though. Like what is that actually yeah. Right, moving clients and then incorporate. Uh, so for anybody watching that may be thinking about making a move like this, they can. Yeah, so the, I mean, and the concept works in reverse as well. If you're with a big firm and you're launching your own, just kind of the process of going from one firm to another. Um, I underestimated how long it would take and I underestimated how complicated it was gonna be. Um, you know, think about what you've got to do every time you onboard a new client, you have to get a signed management agreement. You have to get their personal information. You have to create a profile in Salesforce or whatever CRM you're using. You have to have copies of old account statements that you're transferring. You have to open new accounts. You have to dis deliver disclosures. You have to countersign everything and send it back to them. Um, it took a, a lot of time and energy. It took me three months. I'm actually not even done with it yet. I've, I've done that, you know, probably 95% of the transition scheduling clients to come to the new space. Um, you know, it's a very, very complex process. I had a really good team behind me. Our compliance officer and COO is fantastic. Um, so it was, you know, organized. I knew what I needed, but leading up to it, it, it took a couple months of preparation and then you actually leave, you go on broker check, you see that everything has moved over at that point, you can start actually transitioning stuff. Um, it, it was complicated, it took a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of sleepless nights. Um, but now that I'm, I've made the transition, I'm at the new firm, you know, we've, we've improved asset allocation, you know, we've done a lot of things for our clients. Man, I look back and I think I should have done that earlier. I should have done that a long time ago, right? I mean, it's just the fear of, of doing it. You're gonna see your income, you know, go, you know, down until you know picks back up sometimes it might not even pick back up if you're just leaving and taking a couple clients with you and that you've got to face that challenge too it's a psychological battle an emotional battle but it is 100 percent worth it not only for my practice in my future but for the improvement it made for my clients that's awesome and i'm glad you addressed it you addressed that um kind of mental battle that advisors have we have a series here with our c uh cco chief of compliance mazi it's called going independent. And he talks about that all the time. And advisors, once they can kind of get past that mental hurdle, then the world kind of opens up to them in terms of the possibilities they can have with designing their best firm. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. It's a scary, you got kids, you got responsibilities, you got bills, you know, you got, you don't want to, you have to kind of like protect your ego and say, look, I'm going to not make a ton of money for like the next couple quarters or whatever it is. Like, you know, you got to get all that out of there and just, it is absolutely worth it um, to put yourself in the best situation for your own growth, for the growth of your clients. It's absolutely worth every challenge that comes with it. Jackson, what's your best growth hack for the advisor that's watching today? What advice would you give them as they try to scale their firm like you are? So I've, I've got two. My, my favorite one is relatively simple. Um, I tell every one of my clients or my families that I serve, that I work for, that I love working for them. I tell them honestly, I write them a letter and say, you know what, I really enjoy working with you. If you know anybody that you know could use financial planning or asset management, if they're friends of yours, they're part of our family. And just asking for referrals, I know that that is probably an answer that a lot of people give, but that has been tremendous. You know, Clients love that you tell them, hey, I've loved working for you. I love serving you, client and family. You're part of our family. Um, and that has just been a really good source of, you know, leads and, and new opportunities for, for me and for the firm. 
And the other one in terms of just content marketing, be authentic, be yourself, tell the story, right? That's it. I mean, people are drawn to you. If you let your clients or prospects have a little glimpse into what your life is like, they can trust you. They see what you do on the weekends. You know, you can show them. I mean, you know, I do think that advisors should kind of let people know about their life. And uh, to me, that's been a really big uh, blessing because, you know, people, I've had clients that, you know, they'll say, Hey, oh, you're the coach of your son's soccer team. And I didn't tell them that they must've seen that on social media or something. And it just creates this connection and, and trust. And, and that, that to me has been a huge, huge blessing. So ask for referrals, tell your clients that you love them and that you'd love to work with people like them and then just be authentic. And I think that's the magic recipe. That's, that's the key to it. At least it has been for me. That's awesome, Jackson. Now for the advisor watching that wants to follow everything you're doing, where can they do so? So I'm on Instagram and Twitter, mostly uh, at Jacksonwood HQ is my handle. I'm on LinkedIn. I think I have like five connections on there. I, <laughs> when I joined Ryan and Freedom at Freedom Day, he said, hey, um, it's the first platform I have more followers than you on. And so he's kind of schooling me on LinkedIn. I'm there. I'd love to make professional connections there. Just kind of grow my network there. Um, yeah. Jacksonwood is LinkedIn and at Jacksonwood HQ on, on Twitter and Instagram. Jackson, thank you again for joining me. And thank you all for watching. To subscribe to our network, feel free to visit altruist.com slash grow and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm your host, Asarte Yarnway, and we'll see you here again soon. Mm -hmm.